Okay, this is the February meeting of the WebRTC Working Group. This group abides by the W3C patent policy that is listed at the link, and only people and companies listed on the status page are allowed to make substantive contributions. Uh, today, we're going to cover WebRTC PC, screen share, media recorder, and media capture main. We have future meetings scheduled for March and April. So uh, meeting info is up on the wiki, and the links to the slides have been published. We do need uh, to get volunteers for note taking. As usual, the meeting is being recorded. Do we have a volunteer for note taking? I'll do it. Thank you. The meeting operates under the W3C Code of Conduct, and please be professional. I think you all know how to operate Google Meet by now, but raise your hand to get into the speaker queue and lower it to get out. And uh, please wait for microphone access to be granted before speaking. If you jump the queue, we will mute you. Um, state your full name also can help with the note taking. I don't think we'll use polls today, but if we do, it's there. I'm not going to go through this. I think we all know how things work more or less. OK. So here's what's on the agenda. We have a bunch of WebRTC CPC uh, issues to talk about relating to send and receive codecs, stuff like that. And then we have the screen share portion of the meeting, media stream recording, and uh, media capture main. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with whoever to CPC. Um, may not take 40 minutes, but but we will see. Um, the main topic here really is uh, the codec model and um, things relating to set codec preferences. And so we'll we'll get into that. All right. So I uh, just wanted to talk about this issue. It's not a WebRTC issue per se. This issue actually came up in ABT Core, which was issues with receive only codecs. Um, and the reason I bring it up is we had a discussion of JSET BIS, which is also going to come up, I think, in the Weber CPC issues section of 4.2.6, where it says that said codec preferences does not directly affect which codec the implementation sends. It only affects which codecs the implementation indicates it prefers to receive in the offer answer. So there's a thread going on about this, about whether this. Uh, this, these two sentences are actually correct. And so far, the tendency is, if we're talking about a send only M line, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you, for send only M line, set codec preferences does, does do something, and it, it can't be all about what's being received, since that's not what a send only M line does. Um, so there was a sense that there's something wrong with this. Um, and then uh, people looked, if you look at the thread, they looked at set code of preferences and the way it's described. And generally, people seem to think, yeah, that seems to more or less make sense. So I know we've been having this argument about, is there something we need to change in set code of preferences, or is there something in JSON BIS? And at least in ABT Core, the sentiment seems to be that it's JSON BIS, which is more the problem than set code of preferences although we have all these issues we're going to discuss. So anyway, the next step that's been proposed is to actually post something on the RTC web mailing list about this, uh, raising the question about whether JSON hasn't been published yet. It's in the queue. So whether we need to adjust this, these two sentences, and if so, how. Um, so if you have a, an opinion in particular, you probably want to join this thread. We're not going to get into it here, but um, just so you know that, that this Jessup this section is under being questioned. OK, I'm going to turn it over to Harold. Yeah, so uh, the I looked at the description of how codec negotiation is described in, in WebRTC PC. I mean, the angle I came in on was from uh, trying to define user-defined codecs for, for, for uh, and call it transform, but it seemed 
when I looked at it, it I found it, found it to be very informal. You, could, you can't really write test for something that says that, okay, you match up a list with this list with this other list. So I was wondering, does it make sense to describe it differently? So I made up a PR and that basically says that for the purposes of describing what's happening, we have a conceptual list of all the codex, code of configuration that are possible. It's a long list. And uh, because when you have a, a codec that can handle like 10 different configurations, 10 different set of parameters, that's not, the, that's codec specific. We don't want codec specific language. But uh, if we have this conceptual list of everything that's acceptable, which is, which you can think of as the, the thing that media capabilities looks up, looks up things in, uh, then we can say that, okay, some of these configurations are enabled. And that means that you're going to use them in, uh, in uh, offers and answers. But what to enable is actually implement implementation dependent. And life would be a lot simpler if we could say that the, the code configurations that we ask for get enabled. Because then we can just say that, okay, if we don't like any of the current ones, we can ask for one and then we get it. And I found that this allowed me to define negotiation more precisely. I mean, basically look it up in a table, see if it's there. If it's not, then, uh, it, then you can't use it. If it is, then you can use it without being product specific. Next slide. So this is too many slides, but uh, things that should be easier to define if we describe things this way. Enabling codecs that are not enabled by default. I mean, you went has a has a later slide that that indicates uh, uh, that we actually don't want to enable everything because it's fingerprint surface. Using media capabilities to get codecs and enable them, and either adding new API to enable codecs, or we can modify sets and codec or sets of codec preferences, and of course. The place I came from, we use a defined codex for send, sending and receiving. Uh, so this seems like a win. So next slide. So there's a PR in user defined codex where the explainer is using the, roughly this model to, or it will be very easy to describe using this model. So that's the immediate applicability of this way of describing it. But I wanted to, set, to ask the group for the PR2935, does this seem to be reasonable direction to go in. So discuss. Bernard. Yes, I think I think it does uh, seem like a reasonable direction to go in. You know, uh, after this whole issue came up, I remember reading it and um, the, more, the more I get into it, the more the current situation doesn't really make sense. And I think it's problematic, as you said, because it's, it's too ill defined. Uh, um, yeah, there's a whole, there's too much stuff that's just not in the spec. Um, so it's a step forward. Yeah. So some people might uh, not have read the code, read the spec, the, the pull request yet. But uh, Janivar? Yeah, so overall, I think uh, 
it makes sense to add some more detail to it. I like that. Um, and also being able to add more set APIs will allow user agents to, to have a more neutral baseline. Um, I think we need to keep track of the fingerprinting concerns, um, but they seem no, as long as they map directly to what uh, media capabilities already exposes, I think we have a, a line to follow on that. So I think that might work. Um, and of course, we need to clear up the whole uh, directionality um, business as well. So, so this looks like a, uh, an improvement to me so far. Okay. Looks like an improvement. Why not? Yeah, I just have a comment that occurred to me while Yanevar was speaking, which is uh, media capabilities doesn't have any way to look at directionality, does it? Well, I guess you choose the encoder or decoder, but I'm just wondering in my head whether it actually works the way we might think it would work. I mean, yep. I mean uh, you can you have to make two calls to media capabilities to figure out whether you can use the same codec for encode and decode. Right. Uh, but is it is it true to say that if something is receive only, it should only show up in the decoder and media capabilities, or that's a bug? Yes. Okay. I think so. Uh, I, I, think, actually I, think that, I think that's what the Yeah, I just I think I may need to test to make sure it actually does that. But yeah. So sounds like we can uh, review the the PR the PR on the on Thursday and might just possibly merge it, and then we'll work further on the on the encoder transform PR and uh, try to. And state that in terms of the merge thing on the codex. Sounds good. Okay, we have thumbs up. Not made. So the editors will talk about it more on Thursday and hopefully merge. Okay, Yuan, your turn. Yes, uh, following on Harold's uh, topic of audio video codecs. Um, so we're in a position where uh, we have more and more audio video codecs that are exposed uh, on the web and in WebRTC, like uh, lately HVC and AV1 will, are starting to appear. And um, with media playback, typically, uh, you're using media capabilities to know whether a decoder is available. And if it's not, then you select another one and you, you go through your configuration and you, you get answer one call at a time. And it's good because uh, it follows the data minimization privacy principle, uh, which is to only expose information about uh, the user agent, about the user setup uh minimal information that is needed by the website and if we look at what WebRTC is doing and i think the ping working group mentioned that as well uh so they, they might come back to us uh, in that area um currently i think WebRTC is exposing all audio video codecs that are available on the platform uh either via get capabilities and or sdp so it's a fingerprinting issue it's also uh, an issue uh, in terms of payload types. Like if you have like 100 uh, video codecs and you put them in VSDP, then you have a lot of payload types that are being used, which is uh, potentially annoying. Yes, Harald? Just, uh, we don't expose everything that's implemented, but the only API that works for like, enabling those that are not implemented, if people just try that. Uh, and is is so, uh, hacking the local description, and that's a sad way of of, of doing things. Yeah, yeah, co correct. In VIP, in get capabilities, I guess we are. Oh no, you're mentioning the uh, yeah the uh, audio encoder that is doing uh, nothing basically. Like okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, in principle, I would say that get capabilities uh, initial goal at least was to expose everything that was supported. And it's an old API. We, we want it to deprecate it, and we still want to deprecate it. 
And so the question here is whether we could use media capabilities uh, in WebRTC like it's done in media playback. Um, and so the, the discussion here, next slide, is to, to see whether that's feasible and uh, gather feedback uh, from the working group and maybe uh, find a solution to, to that issue. Um, so we, we could say that a user agent like Safari has a fixed list of exposed by default codecs. So for instance, uh, in Safari, AV1 is not exposed in all Safari versions. So it's a fingerprinting issue. So maybe we Safari could decide that uh, AV1 would never be exposed by default. So would not be in this list. And then the website would need to use media capabilities to query for AV1 uh, WebRTC support. And web, the website uh, would then need to say, hey, it's available, I want to use it in, with some APIs in, in WebRTC. Um, so it has some advantages that I mentioned here, like it's reducing the exposure of what get, get exposed, so it's good for that minimization. It's also probably fine for SFUs, which tend to have like, uh, hey, I'm supporting that configuration, so let's check that it's available. Uh, so there it's probably kind of okay. And uh, the additional good thing is that um, if we want to retire uh, a codec, for instance, it's no longer being widely used, we, we, you can still use it for legacy purposes, but we want to, to remove it, then um, we, we could change this default list if uh, websites start to use this API to enable their codecs before using them. So it, it would make uh, user agent life easier, I think, in the, fu in the future. Um, the, the disadvantage is that uh, when you have a new codec, maybe it's better, and you might want to use it by default, but uh, typically websites would need to opt in. And um, this might be an issue for uh, user to agent to user agent, like one-on-one -on -one calls where uh, negotiation is mostly SDP based. And maybe, maybe that's an issue there. Right? You might end up in a suboptimal uh, setup. Um, so faults there. Um, so there's uh, the GitHub issue also. So if faults can uh, uh, go to that issue and um, provide feedback there, that would be good too. Uh, I see Bernard on the queue. Yeah, so um, I, I think what you're saying, Yuan, can make sense for um, certainly the simpler codecs, VP8, VP9, like AV1 or something like that, where I begin to get a little bit of a, uh, some questions is with things like HEVC or H.264. And so here's, here's, a weird, here's a weird scenario. Say I have a situation where I, for some reason my encoder can encode more than my decoder can decode, right? So I, mm -hmm. I don't query for the thing that, uh, so, and we're going we're gonna to have lots of discussion about what to do in that situation. But um, my question would be, say I queried media capability for the, the common level that both could be encoded and decoded, right? Like 3.1 or something like that for HGBC. And it came back and said, yes. So does Safari Tech Preview then give me, uh, if I ask for a send receive M line, do I then get HGBC in both? Uh, send and receive, whereas if I had queried for 5.1 and it had said yes, I, I would get like a, a send only M line with 5.1 and maybe a send receive M line with 3.1. Um, See what I'm saying? It, it starts to affect yeah. the whole offer answer thing. Um, That's a good question. Um, so there's a PR in media capabilities where uh, you, you would say, hey, I'm using WebRTC, I want to know the decode thing there. And then you 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 get a WebRTC specific structure, a codex specific structure that you could pass to WebRTC API, and and you would enable it this way. So in that case, if you're querying for 5.1, it's not reported. Uh, then you would not be able to uh, call that API to enable HGBC. Um, but the the good thing would be that you know if you enable HGBC, you you would query 5.1, it's not available. Then you query, you would query 3.1 it would be available there. So you know that only 3.1 is available and not 5.1. And right. it's it's media capabilities that gives you that. And it's... Yeah, uh, yeah the weird thing yeah. is these these send only and send receive situations. So like, uh, I, I'm just wondering if the whole behavior would change if I queried 5.1 because now 5.1 is not ex really expressible in a send receive M line. You see what I'm saying? It, 
right? Yeah. It can also I mean, be active. yeah, SDP has some uh, limitations in in the subcodex you can actually uh, support, and it's not ex expressing everything. And uh, media capabilities will give you that, so it will be really up to the web application to uh, to handle this situation. I guess that it's uh, with this particular issue, it's not an improvement, but it's not a drawback either. It's uh, staying the same as uh, currently. Yeah, that's probably true. It stinks either way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at least with media capabilities, the website knows this information, but 5.1 uh is not available for instance on the coding side and that may help uh selecting the codex or uh, setting parameters correctly i see tim on the queue yeah i i like this i think it's um <laughs> overdue probably um i think that your final disadvantage of the ua to ua is probably not too serious in the sense that I generally even in that situation the kind of thing building the site has a fairly strong view on what it wants to use anyway um, so I, I I don't see that as a problem the only issue I have is kind of what Bernard was talking about is how precisely you have to query in order to find out that a particular sub mode profile whatever of h264 is available or isn't and particularly since the current situation is that the actually most of the user agents lie. They say that they can't decode things that they can decode. So I think we need to be a bit careful to kind of say, have, have the situation which is like, actually, this isn't available when actually it pretty much is. Or you ask, you have to ask for exactly like the precise needle in the haystack in order to get a yes back. And that would worry me. So um yeah I, I kind of i worry about the sort of sub settings of codex rather than the kind of broad sweep of them like av1 and h264 like that's easy um but like you know particular profiles of them uh, is is problematic perhaps yeah i think you're taught you you've had the same concern i have tim which is h264 and h265 primarily yeah I mean, everyone as well has this notion of profile uh, complexity, so it's it's also in scope, I guess. Yeah. So I think I'm next on the queue. Uh, I like this, uh, and I think we're, that we're marrying media capabilities and uh, and uh, WebRTC codex more closely, which is probably good for both. I do think that we need to link them explicitly, not implicitly, like we're doing now. And uh, UN has a PR that I think we should merge that says media capabilities actually return the WebRTC shaped codec description when it's asked for, uh, can I play this specific configuration? That allows us to probe for exactly the properties this configuration has and uh, ensure that the description we get is actually inspectable to and usable in WebRTC land. So yes, I think we should marry them. I do think that, uh, that uh, it's good to have the default set of codecs be implementation defined because if we have a codec that is universally support, supported by a, a given platform, it uh, doesn't give much fingerprinting surface and exposing it allows automatic up upgrade of all applications that, that use just uh, default negotiation. But uh, we can do data min minimization on that. Um, I tend to agree. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, I should revive the media capabilities uh, API proposal. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Please. Yonivar? All right, I'm next on the queue. 
Uh, yes, I just wanted to say I'm supportive, and I think reducing API surface here is a good thing. Even if we don't get rid of it entirely, having a fixed list seems to be in the right direction. Uh, still some concerns about whether media capabilities will solve all our fingerprinting needs, because at the end of the day, I know the, the Ping Group, they favor more set APIs, which this will accommodate. But at the end of the day, uh, it's still JavaScript that has to hand carry an offer to the other tier. So, but uh, it looks like improvement. OK, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll try to uh, dig into uh, then uh, an API proposal because there's a need to tie media capabilities and uh, and WebRTC here. I, I don't know whether it should be per transceiver, per connection, and so on. May maybe transceiver set codec preference is the uh, easy way. Um, but then set codec preferences is, uh, yeah, it's probably fine because it's synchronous but media capabilities is aging so yeah it's probably fine so, something like that but if you if you have like ideas there uh please comment also on, on the pr you know well, i don't think it'd be easy, easy, easier to describe this when we have uh, merged the previous one and see how we discuss yeah agreed okay so i think there's some consensus here and we can uh, move uh, move forward with uh, a proposal. Thank you, Yuan. Okay, Pippo. Uh, Pippo, I think you're muted. Again? Does it work good now? Yeah. Okay, Google Meet has a bug with HID devices. So HBOS found a note in the specification that basically reiterates what JSEP already says. And the proposal he had was to remove that note because it's already covered by JSEP, and we might need to resolve some issues with JSEP anyway. And the whole codec negotiation is already clarified in Harold's PR 2925. So if we, unless anyone objects, I can make a PR and write a web platform test that covers the behavior for this one. Bernard? Yeah, I agree. It should be deleted and it's extraneous, so. Okay, I'll do the PR and then we can let the editors integrate. Okay, next slide. Okay, we have more issues around set codec preferences. We are only going to discuss one of them, HBOS file two more. And as we changed earlier, set codec preferences influences the receive preferences. But this also changes the order of codecs in the SDP offer. This is what we did in PR 2926. And the question that arises after that is what happens if you do set codec preferences and then set the transceiver to send only? As a result of the changes we did, we are no longer throwing early in set codec preferences, but we can end up with direction filtering of the codex in the SDP, and that may result in an empty set of codex. Because we have some codex which are receive only, and we have at least one case where we have a send only codex currently. So the question is what happens then? And this is going to be surprising for developers as a change, and we also need the JSET clarification. Next slide. So HFL proposed a couple of ways to avoid the situation. The first one is to do sanity checks and checking in set codec preferences and when setting the direction, and those could throw. 
this change would mean that we now throw and setting a direction, which I think we did not do before. Second alternative is to let create office throw an error, which is doable. The third option is if we have nothing to offer, so an empty set, we can reject the M line. And when set local description is called, it stops the transceiver. This is my preference. The other alternative would be to offer one of the mandatory to implement codec as backup. However, a lot of people seem to use set codec preferences to remove codecs like VP8 because they don't like that particular codec. Or we could say that set codec preferences could require at least one codec that is sent receive. So we have always something irrespective of direction and never need to throw from setting from setting direction. Does anyone have any preferences or do we discuss this more on the GitHub issue? I see Bernard raised his hand. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that uh, looking over this issue, given some of the discussion we've had about offer answer, I'm not sure it's entirely, the thinking is entirely right because the JSIP, it's kind of based on the JSIP paragraph, which looks like it's wrong. So let me, um, so here, here's, here's the way I think about this, and maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't, right? The, the first thing is that, you know, in, in the offer answer model, in, in send receive, you're only supposed to have stuff you can both send and receive. Right, and then in receive only, you have stuff you can only receive, and in send only, you have stuff you can only send. So, for me, to my mind, it seems like these are three separate lists of things to which set codec preferences can be applied to change the order. So, that, that that's kind of how I think about it. And so, when you're changing direction, um, you're actually kind of going to a different list of stuff, if that makes sense. And it doesn't. Yeah, so it's 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 kind of confusing. Like I could I could call it on a receive only M line and, and rearrange things. And then my question is, you know, I, I then change it to send receive, but it's it's a different list. So does that the changes I made before, does that persist into the send receive M line? And then I, I change it to send only and I move stuff around. And does that you know, I, I think of them as separate, but I don't know if we've defined like the interaction between that. Does that make any sense? It does. I think JSEP is very confusing in that area. It says that set codec preferences affects receive, but it doesn't say anything about the other lists if we think about it as three lists, as you say. And I think people currently expect it to operate on a single list. And changing that might be a bit tricky in terms of web compat. Right, right, and and so that yeah, the problem is also when you think of it as a single list, you can have stuff in send receive that can only be sent, mm -hmm. and I think that's just uh, that's that, that doesn't seem to be in in keeping with offer answer. Anyway, someone can yes. explain this to me, <laughs> please go ahead. It's very confusing. Yes, Jan Ivar, maybe you can explain it. Well, I, I was just going to warn against complexity here, and I think. Uh, it seems to me that, regardless of what JSEP says, uh, it would be desirable, at least, I think, if the set codec API and being able to change your direction from inactive to send only, send receive, and all these things were orthogonal and independent. And one way that intuitively it seemed like we could address it, not perfectly, was to have a super list and basically, basically try to minimize the changes. Maybe we're go going a little too fast here. Uh, and if set codec preferences was a super list, and you then can apply both send and receive codecs. If an application gets into a bind where nothing is being sent, that seems like an obvious mistake. However, I'm a little worried about throwing on them because that it, I like better the approach where we basically fill in to keep things going in those cases, since they sound like they would be rare. Just an opinion. Harald? Yeah, I found the, one of the other threads interesting where we basically concluded that, well, no uh, send-only codec, codec in the send-receive line is just impossible to represent in SDS, SDS, SDP. We should just uh, admit failure and move on. Uh, 
the critical thing here is that changing direction after you have configured the codec influ influences the set of codecs available. And that stating your preference has two effects. One is stating your preference for receiving, and the other is offering a default for the other guy, guy's preferences, what he will return in the answer if he doesn't have a, his own opinion. And, uh, and uh, the last one is the only reason to set uh, preferences on a send-only line. The only rational reason. So it seems that we that if we require that at least one codec is send receive, we are safe. And uh, adding receive only codecs is actually also safe. Even though we can't send, nobody insists that the send receive line is, uh, is going to send. So I think this is a painful thing with STP. And we should just admit failure on the on the send only case and we, sh and we should uh, figure out the least painful way of going with the set codec preferences, where the last option is possibly the the one that causes the least pain. I mean, if if we have nothing to offer, what should we do? I don't know. Yes, if we have nothing in common, the normal way the platform operates is to reject that M line, which is why I like the third option. Okay, shall we wait for JSEP to decide what they are going to do with set codec preferences and circle back after that? Uh, I don't know if waiting is such a great idea because it's it's like we're the people who'll be in that other discussion too. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, but we can uh I think we should like huddle and figure out what we want to say to RTC Web. I, I don't wanna I imagine just, uh, Justin's not going to be terribly happy, but um, I, th I think it's a discussion we need to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll discuss at the next meeting, hopefully. And with that, I think we're done with this section. Sorry, I was unsure what discussion at which next meeting. Uh, I think it, uh, it's not going to be discussed at ITF 119, right, Harold? Because RTC Web isn't meeting. So RTC is closed, isn't it? So I think it's back in your court for AVD chorus, the backup for everything. Right, right. So uh, it, anyway, I think FIPO met at the Web RTC working group meeting, I think. But, but what will be new by then? Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have made, uh, we might have some discussion uh, at ITF 119 or just on the mailing list with Justin. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we're a bit ahead of time. Uh, and so this section is on screen capture. Um, and as we did last meeting, we're gonna have a little bit of discussion of the status of each of these specs. Um, as we get into them, uh, this is the WPD test status for screen capture as it is. Um, there are some odd things here. I don't know if anybody understands what's going on with the capture controller. Uh, yeah, I can speak to that if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so thank you for including these uh, these screenshots. So we're, what we see here, <clears throat> we see a lot of green, which is good. Uh, the parts that are red are usually, so this is screen capture, get display media, uh, works in all browsers. The areas 
of Red deals mostly with capture controller, which is a new, uh, a late added feature, which only has one implementation, but everything else oh, okay. seems to have multiple implementations. Uh, there's also um, there's some Red on the iframe delegation. <clears throat> But uh, as far as numbers go, the, the big difference is, is capture controllers. Right. Okay. Which I think is a fairly non controversial API, but currently only has one implementation. So we're, we're, we're looking for more on this one. All right. Do you know if any plans to implement it in those browsers? I think we would like to, but it's not on our short term roadmap for Firefox. Yeah, same for us. Um, just to mention that we, we discussed a little bit in media working group uh, similar issues there. And uh, it, it was mentioned that uh, a spec going to CR is, is still great, even though some features are not uh, are only implemented in one, one user agent. So that, that's something we could consider yeah. doing here as well. Yeah, so as long as we have... Uh and understanding that uh, there will be more. I think you're right. We don't need two implementations for CR, only to exit CR. So I think we can make progress here. All right, so next slide, let's see here. For discussion, <clears throat> uh, so this is screen capture. It's also called media capture screen share. There, you'll notice there are some differences in naming in the W3C published document repos and GitHub, <coughs> but uh, so we'll, We'll first uh, discuss some H2 triage and milestones that we've added. And then we have two issues to discuss, extension spec and uh, cancellations. <clears throat> so screen capture is still a working draft, which is a bit surprising because it's quite mature uh, in implementations, at least the core functionality of get display media. Screen capture is available, you know, sharing a presentation like we're doing here is, is Pretty much well supported in all browsers but it's an active working group it has 31 open issues and <clears throat> to assist further triage that the chairs have decided to add two milestones which is a github feature that uh, hopefully shed some uh, light about it's another way for uh, us to prioritize so we've made two milestones one is candidate recommendation <clears throat> and the due date there is kind of arbitrary so don't pay too much attention to it but uh, there are 19 issues that we've identified, that the sheriffs have identified as blocking candidate recommendation, going to candidate recommendation, and about uh, 12 issues, <clears throat> excuse me, that the chairs had earlier identified as enhancements with an enhancement label. And so the idea is that we're not going to treat those as blocking CR, and because we have some plans of how to deal with enhancements on the next slide. So if you're not familiar with uh, GitHub milestones, I believe at least the chairs can sort the issues and milestones. And this is mostly an organizing tool. So feel free to challenge <clears throat> if you see any issues. Uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot in the meeting, but if you see any issues that you feel we've miscategorized or you think it's more important or less important, uh, please uh, uh, let us know, uh, comment an issue, that sort of thing. All right. <clears throat> any any questions first about this this uh, way of approaching things? All right. So the next slide then is uh, should we have a screen share extension spec? <clears throat> so basically, due to the state of this spec, uh, it doesn't really deserve to still be working draft. So we'd like to get it to candidate recommendation quickly. Um, and eventual recommendation, and to to have a forward process, forward motion in the process. Basically, we're thinking of ways to do that, and one way we've done so in the past, excuse me, is to split out the enhancements requests, the twelve requests for enhancements, into a follow up. Uh, in the past, we've had a, a working um, migrate document uh, that we use for WebRTC PC. Um, which is that we created a separate WebRTC extension spec 
WebRTC PC is at REC. So that is a, a working mode that we've adopted there. And similarly for media capture main, which we also want to go to 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 REC, we've also broken out a media capture extensions repo. <clears throat> Should we do the same here and transfer the 12 enhancement? So that's the first question for the working group. Does that make sense? And if that makes sense, like shed time. Does anyone think this does not make sense? Uh, you Yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, so in, in the media working group, uh, it was advised that um, having an extension spec is, uh, is is more complex um, and is it needs more work for editors basically i guess but the benefit is that uh from the point of view of web developers at least it's very clear it's, it's clear what is mature and what is not and um and i, I quite like that I, I don't know how much this is actually uh useful for web developers so uh, if it is useful for web developers, and if it helps being very clear about what is mature and what is not, uh, I would go there. If we find out that it's not useful, and then maybe we should just say, okay, let's have screen share be in CR forever and be a living kind of document and just have one document forever. Right. Uh, the issue right now is that it's still in a working draft. So um it sounds like we just we haven't got the candidate recommendation yet but we'd, we would like to and the question is so can we, we get could, there yeah we, we could go with, to cr and put as enhancement as future at risk the issue mm -hmm. is that probably it would it will confuse people and uh but that's why uh, maybe not confusing is better even though it means more work from for editors Okay. Yeah, so that's that's a good point. I think we've mentioned the, that describes the two alternatives here. Yeah. And um, uh, Tim? Yeah, so uh, do we think realistically it will help? Like, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with the idea, but it, it's only worth doing if we think that the 12 enhancements are really blocking or that there'll be more that will come along and that the, the 19 are actually solvable in a sensible time frame. Because if they're, if they're not, then like we're doing more work for no purpose. Yeah, yeah, I think they will help because I think there's a lot of activity and, and new enhancements are actually uh, real uh, features that are being added. And, and maybe Ella can speak to that. You next. Uh, yeah, I would also, uh, so I think this is a good idea because if there's anything that would make people more amenable to adding issues, to making progress on issues, um, I would love that. And if not blocking CR, like I think that people are going to be um, more open to discussing issues and adding uh, them to an extension spec than to a spec that they want to go to CR. All right, thank you. Uh, Tim? Sorry, just to clarify my question is I was actually more interested in the 19 like do we think the 19 are solvable in in a sensible time frame well uh yeah it's they're probably more solvable than the extensions I think so uh, also, we're, we're trying think, to figure out yeah so uh Tim uh, I think that Yanivar has also invited you and everybody else to uh look at the 19 and it could be that uh, even less of them are blocking. Uh, I definitely have one that is uh, currently uh, mentioned as non-blocking that I think should be blocking. There might be some that we think uh, are non-blocking, I'm sorry, are blocking that shouldn't be. And maybe we can pare down the list into uh, something even shorter than 19. Yeah, so if I look briefly at the 19, and there's a link in the, in the slides, there's five editorial issues. So then you're down to uh, 14. And there's uh, a privacy tracker to beef up the privacy and security section, and some click checking concerns that we need to specify. Uh, I think, I, yeah, I think it's very doable. I think it's just work that needs to be done. 
and by triaging out uh, get display media mostly works <clears throat> i think there's just been a lot of uh, feature enhancements that, that are still to be possible to be made that are additional to the core value that it could go in an extensions bernard yeah i i agree with you young ever that i think many of them are in fact addressable and in fact, really need to be like uh, one of the things that's come out of our new process is that we're paying a lot more attention to the privacy concerns that have been raised. And I think that's that's pretty important to, to deal with. All right, so I'm hearing, uh, I think, um, mostly agreement that an extension spec would be good here, that it would be better for web developers, a little more work for editors. But I'm not hearing anyone saying we shouldn't do it because of that. Does that make sense? All right. I'm not uh, hearing any only one, uh, only one question, and that is uh, how long do we want to let people uh, look at the list of non blocking versus blocking, and uh, uh, when will we lock in the uh, that decision? Um, I think. <clears throat> Well, I think we can uh, say like a week or so, and uh, but we can always move issues back, but it sounds like uh, right now we could uh, we could immediately uh, start an extension repo. We could move the issues over. And if people, if there's a particular issue that shouldn't have been moved, then it, we could always move them back. That's one approach. Uh, but if we want to wait a week, we can also do that. Uh Presumably, Longer. we will also uh, try to go for CR uh, when we've finished <laughs> all of the uh, things. And I guess that one is not actually very easy to roll back, right? Well, for, for the 19 issues uh, that have to be closed uh, before CR, I think we have some time. Yeah. OK, makes sense. All right, cool. All right, thanks. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> So um, to try to drill down the list, issue list, we have one issue that I thought we could make progress on right away, um, which is issue 281. Uh, there was an issue filed to distinguish cancellations from uh, lack of OS permissions. And Ella, do you, uh, do you want to present this one? Or do you, I can just read the slide if you want. Um, I do have some things to say, but as you can see, I'm not at home. And uh, maybe if you spoke, uh, okay. if, if there will be less interruption here. All right, so I'll introduce it. Uh, basically, applications want to distinguish missing OS permissions uh, from user cancellation. And um, uh, Firefox actually ha has a solution here in the way it has implemented this spec here, which is that Firefox will reject with not found error, which is different from not allowed error in this situation. And that's based on our interpretation of the spec here. If no sources of type T are available, and we think of that sentence to mean to the user agent, that's our interpretation. And this is similar to how we handle camera and microphone. Um, so that actually gives you a way, that actually gives web developers a way to distinguish uh, cancellation, not allowed error from uh, there's no OS. This user has no OS permissions to, and therefore nothing to share. And part of our reasoning there was that OS permissions may be out of reach, even on some systems, if you have an administrator or a parent, for example, and a set up your computer. So that's why we thought it was important for it to be distinct from um, please allow permission for this feature before pr proceeding, which might not be possible. Uh, so for screen sharing, this should be unambiguous in normal cases, because uh, you normally have at least one screen to share. And for camera and microphone site, uh, for camera and microphones where Firefox behaves similarly, uh, sites can actually disambiguate using enumerate devices, uh, which ap appears to work even without OS permission in all the browsers I tested. So question for the working group: uh, Does this make sense for screen capture? Does this make sense for camera and microphone? Separate question. And if so, then we could add a note about this.
I'm not seeing um, anyone in the queue. Is Elad? Elad is on the queue. Yes. Uh, thank oh. you. Uh, so uh, definitely we agree. Uh, I think that I filed that issue and that uh, we agree that this is a problem worth solving. Um, while not found error does sound like a possible solution, I wonder if we could do just a little bit better. So number one is that it doesn't really seem to me like the spec uh, explicitly says that this is the error to return when there are um, no operating system uh, permissions or no permissions because an admin configured the UA that way. And if we could uh, explicitly call that out, I think that's going to prevent uh, uh, future uh, developers from having to dig through, you know, it's like WebRTC working group um, minutes in order to understand that. And the second is that uh, it's not clear to me that not found error is the best error to uh, throw here or to raise uh, because um, it doesn't really speak to me that way, right? It doesn't, uh, not found error does not really say anything about, it. Cl it's closer to not allowed, but we need to be able to distinguish it from not allowed by user. Uh, so I wonder uh, on the issue, I raised a couple of um, other possibilities and I wonder if the working group might be more interested in that. Uh, so on the issue, UN, Yanivar and I have voiced opinions, but maybe others could also voice opinions here. So I'll just give one of the alternatives that I mentioned there. Um, we could define a new error that basically either derives from um, that, you know, it's like uh, it could be a subclass that has the name not found error or the name uh, not allowed error. But, you know, its type can be something a bit more specific. Right. So so I did comment there as well. I think in, in general, um, <clears throat> I think when we're defining I think there's usually pushback in the design guide against defining new custom errors on unless and and so far we've been looking for existing DOM exception errors that apply to our domain and that means they're not always a perfect fit. Um, so in that case, I think best practice has been to find an existing error that works the best. So in this case, since there it's also, some web compatibility issue, Firefox already works this way. I, I think we should, uh, you know, I'm biased, of course. So I think we should uh, stay with that error. And I'm not that concerned <clears throat> that the error name itself doesn't fully explain what's going on. I think that's mostly up to documentation and the message string, which could be customized. As, uh, also, as to the uh type of the interface i think we normally only extend interfaces if we need to add, add extra members uh, UI? um yeah yes J just to mention that uh i, I think that found error is the um, is a minimal api that is uh already in use and that is covering the the issue um so that, that seems good uh in terms of ergonomics i, I don't think we care as long as it's very clear in the spec that not found error is for this type of things. So we, we would need to be very clear in the spec and probably uh, uh, have a way for web developers to understand that very, uh, very clearly. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a minimal API, so it's, uh, it's good enough. If, if it's not covering some, some cases, then uh, we, we need to continue discussing it. Uh, but I think it's covering uh, the the main issue that was brought up. Okay. Oh, I, and I should add uh, to Elad's other point. I think uh, yes, clarifying it more in the spec to to ha specifically handle OS permissions. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's a good idea. Um, also, if you could just double check that nobody else has any problem with that, uh, and if not, maybe the minutes can reflect that we resolved to uh, send the PR to that effect. All right, are there any other objections to, to moving ahead with the PR to this effect? I'm not awesome. hearing any objections. Awesome. Okay, so, so uh, I will take it on myself to produce a PR that basically says that uh, in the case of operating system, uh, um, maybe we could do even better. Like maybe we could mention that not found error is only for that case. Uh, because well, there there's... is a, there is also um, a theoretical possibility here uh, that would not happen very often, but it can be that there is actually nothing you can share, right? It could be that uh, there are no other tabs open. Uh, you exclude the current tab, which is an option that we already have in the spec. Uh, there might be no monitor attached. It's very unlikely, but of course it could happen. 
And then if some future constraint that I intend to uh, suggest uh, happens to uh, shave off the possibility of sharing a window, then suddenly we're in this edge case. It's not terribly likely, it's not terribly common, but like we can just avoid it altogether. Well, I think in that case, not found error sounds like the right error. And I, I agree that the, there might be an ambiguous case there, but it doesn't sound like a very interesting case. There's nothing, there's really not, well, there's even less reason to push on the user in this case, since they don't have anything to share. I, I agree that it's not a terribly interesting case. So uh, in the um, interest of everybody's time, I'll just withdraw my uh, that particular point. Um, just uh, um, just about uh, the uh, subclass in uh, thing, I am not uh, really, so obviously we don't want to break uh, Firefox if we can avoid it. And uh, one of my proposals was to subclass, but to still say that the name would be not found there. And I wonder whether the spec could be formulated in such a way that it does not mandate that we have to subclass DOM exception, but that it allows it. So that meet, uh, sorry, so that Chrome would be able to implement with a subclass of DOM exception that has the name not found there, uh, but it's a subclass that uh, you know certain uh, applications that want to can check for. But to what end? The end would be that a it would be a bit more uh, produce a bit more readable code and uh, more self-documenting code. Uh, nobody would have to kind of jump over to the um, spec and see ah not found error is actually for OS permissions. And the second one is that in the how case would, that in the sorry how, how would they how would they know to test for the type of the interface? Well, it, it's more that once they author that code, that code would be immediately obvious to anybody reading it. Right. I, I don't think we normally would add code in order to just improve read, readability. If read, readability is the issue, then yeah, I I'm, think I'm not such a name. I'm, Okay. I'm not suggesting that we mandate it. I'm suggesting that uh, the spec could be formulated in a way that allows that. Uh, but then, uh, then we create a situation where code would not run the same way in two different browsers, which I don't think really is what we want here. Yeah, OK. So in that case, maybe yeah. we do want to either mandate it or not. Um, so uh, sorry, somebody who answered. Yes. Yeah, this is this is your quick quick point on uh, operating system and so on. I, I don't think that we have this concept in specs, so we, we might want to to find whether it's actually the case or not. So maybe permissions spec is actually talking about OS versus user agent, but usually it's user agent that is the abstraction, and there we are trying to differentiate, which might be difficult. So and it might be the first time. So it may be good to check with HTML spec folks and so on to, to figure out whether there's already wording that is, uh, that is current. Well, how about this in the media capture main? We have uh, implementation to find reasons and, and then EG, paren EG, uh, you know, things like all its permissions. So if things are, if no sources of type T are available to the user agent, E.g., due to OS permissions, that puts it in the normative prose, but it sounds more like a note. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, so long as it calls out, even if it's uh, by way of example, uh, operating system user agent configuration, the fact that nothing is available that the user agent is allowed to offer the user, uh, that works for me. And uh, with respect to uh, subclassing. Um, I think it would have been better, but it's not important enough uh, to block on that. So I think we can, con at least from my end, uh, we can consider this uh, discussion concluded. All right, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, that reminded me, though, that I did put in a sub question here. Maybe this is a bit cheating, but uh, th there's a question of should we do the same? Would it make sense to do the same for camera and microphone? And we can either discuss that here or in the future. I'm just curious what, what people think and get early feedback. Well, Yaniva, what on the parentheses you were suggesting up in media capture and streams? And if so, wouldn't that by definition apply to the resources? Well, I think uh, right now screen capture has separate language for this. <coughs> so oh, we could make different decisions. 
Okay. Uh, Guido? So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't remember the exact wording on media capture main, but I do know that. Uh, it's similar. Uh, yeah, but I do know that uh, we do uh, in Chrome we do use not found when there is no hardware. Thank you. Right. Um, um, so, so, so Firefox also does that when there's no hardware, you get not found error. But if there's lack of OS permission, we also give not found error. Yeah. And we, you can tell the difference in enumerate devices. Yeah, we, we give uh, not allowed error in that case, uh, both in get display media and get user media. If there's no OS permission, we, we return uh, no, uh, not allowed error, uh, just that the message. Uh, it says permission denied by system instead of just permission denied. Right. And would there be interest, do you think, in switching to not found error to solve a similar situation there? I well, guess the, 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 the thing that I see is that since, especially get user media, since we use not found error for something else, then we have we have the same problem that we have not found error for two things. Mm. Not allowed error for two things. And I think not allowed but, error. Looks like a very match for a permissions issue and not found error. But but a web application in that case would be able to dis disambiguate it if they called enumerate devices, which I tested in the browser in all browsers. So if there's actually no devices, you can learn that from enumerate devices. Um, that, that's not a one hundred percent robust solution because this is async and things could change in the meantime, right? Like the user could be plugging things in or and out, and it can also be that they've got. Uh, we we often see faulty USB hubs that kind of where things connect and disconnect very rapidly. So if there, are, if we could actually have like a, a robust solution that just relied on the error, I think that would be better. Okay. So maybe in the interest of time, I'm hearing support to use not uh, not found error for screen share and more discussions needed for uh, MRN right. mics. I can take an action to file an issue on media capture main uh, following this. Um, we can discuss I, I will just mention that. Um, so uh, while it's nice uh, to make pro progress, uh, if we think that there is any chance that we could have the same solution for both get user media and get display media in the form of uh um you know maybe using not allowed error with something extra distinguishing uh where the source of the lack of permission was uh, i think that would be even better but either works for me like get user media and get display media don't necessarily have to have the same solution right i would like to comment that i think worrying about timing races with devices i think is you know that's inherent, and I don't think that's something we should worry too much about because you know, as, as soon as you have your prompt or whatever, or pick the device, the the user can always yank a cable. So there's no guarantees uh, when it comes to devices. So. Uh, you know, it all depends on the level of uh, polish we want. Uh, sure. You know, uh, everything has a long tail of uh, errors happening, and if you want to accept it here, uh, are we going to apply the same methodology to other? Um, <laughs> proposals right <clears throat> but i think that uh yeah okay you're right i'll finally issue and we can we can keep discussing there does that sound good cool but yeah so so if there's i understand there's uh some uh, bleed over here that it might be have, good to have some consistency between these two specs all right thank you uh, thank you for bringing up this issue and uh, discussing it. All right, great. Thanks. So next slide. So just for the minutes there, uh, go ahead with PR on this one. Yes. <clears throat> okay, media, media screen recording. And Bernard, you provided these slides for uh, this slide for web platform test again. Yeah, it's actually two of them because it's actually kind of longer. But yeah, yeah, so we had the same question for the red stuff. Is there some, can we explain why it's red? Um, Here, that's red. I can, I can explain the... some for Safari. So for Safari, at least, uh, we are not supporting WebM. Uh, so that might explain why. We have this issue. I don't know 
why video MP4 there is not supported though. So maybe it's a bug that we need to fix. Is it a bug for all browsers? Mm, right, it's one for all browsers. Yeah, probably there's, mm, I don't know. I'm just wondering whether there's something, whether this is a some kind of weird test bug or whether there's something here that nobody implemented. So in terms of codec support, given that I don't think we have any codec requirement in the spec, maybe they should mark it as uh, optional to avoid creating confusion. Well, is it just a co codec issue or is it a Canvas media source issue? That's what I'm wondering. Um, I, I'm not sure Chrome and Firefox support media recorder with MP4. Isn't it a web only? But uh, the first step, yeah, with mine type remember. equal to empty string, maybe it's um, maybe it's a test issue uh, because okay, yeah. not all. But uh, one comment here is if we look at the actual numbers, these are uh, single test files. Right. So the numbers look actually pretty good. The overall um, numbers, yeah, they look better. Yeah. So like, both both of, both of the deeply read ones uh, failed with precondition failed. I don't know what what pre, what precondition failed, but uh, that's what it, that's why they failed. Okay. All right. So here's the the rest of them. Right. So at the bottom we we see you know. 230 out of 253, 188, 82. Uh, pretty good numbers overall, I think. Right. Uh, I don't know if there's anything. So Webben stands out. Uh, I don't see anything else standing out. Let's see right here. Um, yeah, a lot of them seem codec related or, or container related. But overall, I yeah, think it, this is pretty good it, shape. It seems to me it would be good. It, like media recorder stop, it's probably to test stop. And uh, I'm not sure why there's a video MP4 and a video WebM version. And uh, so maybe there's some um, re uh, refactoring we could do on the test so that they, they're basically agnostic of the underlying uh, media format being used and uh, just take the, just test the functionality. Uh, right, yeah. right. Yeah, the interesting thing there, UN, is you know, in web codecs, we don't even care about containers, right? It's outside the API. So, um, anyway. Right. So, with that, we can do the next slide, I think. So, uh, jumping right into HD3 hours and milestones for me to have to record. Uh, it's uh, the the TR name is media stream recording remains a working draft despite its maturity and implementations, just like screen capture. But unlike screen capture, there's really no new interest, as this API appears to have been overtaken by web codecs. And if you click on that, it goes to an issue uh, about ability to record non real time frame by frame, <coughs> which is a good discussion of where. Uh, web developers have, have come up with their own solution to their problem using a video encoder from web codecs and the um, media stream track processor or video track generator, I think. So basically, um, this spec seems to have been overtaken by events a bit, uh, but it's still mature in implementation. So I think the chairs would like to rush it to candidate recommendation basically by documenting what exists and closing outstanding issues. Um, Media Capture Record has 28 open issues. So to assist triage, we've again defined two milestones. One is candidate recommendation with an arbitrary due date. Uh, and we found so far in our triage only nine open candidate recommendation blocking issues. Wait, seven. Uh, yeah, nine. Uh, <laughs> there are uh, nine now. There are probably seven when the slide was made. Let's see. You're right. There are nine now. <clears throat> so that's a typo. So seven issues. Sorry, nine issues are identified as blocking CR. 
and the whopping 19 issues are identified as not blocking CR. So the chairs would like to, and I think, I hopefully speak for all chairs, we would target these for closing as one approach um, that we would like to undertake. So um, I guess, are there any objections to that way of thinking? And are there any of the 19 issues? Uh, feel free to look through the 19 issues. Uh, you don't have to necessarily respond in this meeting, but if there are issues you feel that uh, it would be a disservice if we overlooked and closed. Please let us know. And Bernard? Yeah, I'm in favor of this. And I just wanted to emphasize the overtaken by web codex part, which is, you know, there were a lot of hopes for Media Recorder that we do more and more and more, but really web codex is the, is the way to go about this. So uh, I don't think there's any interest in extending it in a lot of these ways. So we should start closing some of this stuff. I don't know if anyone objects to that, but. Right, and just to give people some time, I can read some of the issues. Ability to record non-real-time frame by frame, rate control, provide an option to enumerate all supported media types, provide a way to specify custom encoder, to generate other types of formats, support producing raw encoded bit streams. We have MIME type option, creation of seekable files, integrate with the readable stream, Specify ability to pause and resume between adding and removing media stream tracks to an active media stream. Concat filter, maximize frame rate, restart, multi blob encoding. Uh, yeah, so I feel all these. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of work on Media Recorder that thankfully has been solved, I think, with the existence of Web Codex. So any objection to this plan? All right, not hearing any objections. So I think chairs will try best to minimize the need for vendor assistance in closing out the remaining issues. And we'll try to, um, but you know, if we can improve the web uh, platform test, if we can green that up, that would be, of course be helpful as well. Uh, so there's um, our next slide there. There's one issue, I think. Yeah, so I don't actually have a slide for this, but I uh, wanted to point out issue 202, which was originally filed because it's type supported uh, with synchronous, and that was presented a problem. But the discussion devolved pretty quickly or evolved into pointing out this made, hey, media, cap media capture extension, sorry, media capture, ca well, media capabilities. Oh, media capabilities, thank you, Bernard, uh, kind of takes over the role of its type supported here. So my proposal is that we try to deprecate is type supported because it also has um, the same type of uh, questions around privacy and other things. And uh, so there's a question, how would we do that? Uh, Bernard? Well, in a sense, you could just quote the media capabilities spec, which says it already does that. Right. Uh, but if, to do a callback to the slide that Yuan had, earlier today about maybe returning a fixed list. Uh, we could probably do something similar here, I think, is that we could say it's type supported should produce a reduced set that respects privacy more and then defer to media capabilities for anything new. And that should take care of the sync async issue as well. Does that work for folks? Works for me. Uh, Yuan, what did you think since you mentioned it for the uh, get capabilities? Yeah, that, that works for me. Uh, deprecating it is uh, is a good idea, and uh, having it less uh, up to date information, like re reduced information, is uh, is also good. It's uh, it goes well with uh, with <laughs> deprecation. Deprecation. All right. So, so by deprecating, do we mean uh, keeping it in the spec in this? Describe reduced state, or do we try to remove it entirely from the spec? I guess that's uh, up to editors, perhaps, but maybe not. My guess is that for web compatibility, we can't really say it doesn't exist. 
So we have right. to say it's returned this fixed list uh, and its usage is discouraged. Please move to please move to media capabilities. I like that. Yes. Otherwise, it might break most users of media recorder. All right. Thank you. So it leaves us a path forward. Uh, next slide. It's actually a lookup function, not a fixed list, but a sync. That's why it's problematic. All right, so uh, same procedure for media capture streams, which is also known as media capture main. Uh, it is on its fourth candidate recommendation. Uh, Get user media is mature in implementation and already has some media capture extensions, spillover repo. Uh, this spec defines not just camera and microphone, but the model for other specs, uh, which explains a lot of its activity, I think. Also, devices are hard, which I think. Uh, explains why Media Capture Main still has 30 open issues. So to assist triage, we created two milestones. Um, the first milestone is revised candidate recommendation um, and future versions similar to the other repos. So there are 24 issues identified as blocking CR and six issues identified as not blocking, mostly because they were editorial. So here, I think we just have to pull up our sleeves and try to burn down the issue list to get to hopefully last revised CR and proposed recommendations. So uh, if uh, so, we would, chairs would like to see more activity in this repo, I guess, to try to, to, to accelerate that. So for discussion today, uh, I picked a couple of issues here. Um, and one is actually not from Media Capture Main, but uh, it's from media capture from element. <clears throat> uh, that's issue 65, uh, capture stream on off-screen canvas, which then leads to a media capture extensions PR, and then two issues in media capture main that we can discuss. So let me just jump to that. Oh, sorry, next slide. I'm still seeing the previous slide here. All right. Can you still hear, uh, can you still hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, but okay, next, you. Slide, next slide still, I think. Uh, slide 37 is. No, that's good. I, I just got nervous. I thought uh, it got so quiet. So uh, you all dropped. <clears throat> all right. Um, next slide, please. All right. So this is uh, in media capture from elements. We have a lot of repos. So it was brought to our attention from the tag a while back that uh, we support capture stream on Canvas, but not on off-screen Canvas. Why not? So the use case here is basically rendering to video in workers, or even without workers, anywhere on Canvas is a means to an end, which it often is in these situations when you're capturing a stream. Um, so as an example, I have a link to a shim of media stream track processor, which I can use off screen canvas for today because of the direction it's going, but video track generator cannot be shimmed today using off screen canvas. And so my existing shim that, that I linked to here relies on the a real canvas and is then therefore stuck on main thread. Now, of course, um, for this to be usable, a browser would still need to um, implement media stream track in workers. So there's that. But I don't see why we can't uh, allow this for off screen canvas. Uh, and to, yeah, to clarify, off screen canvas is available both on main thread and worker. Any thoughts on this? Any objections to, to add this symmetry? Not hearing any objections. Oh, Yuan, go ahead. Um, I don't have an objection. Uh, it's just uh, that it will be low in terms of priority for us. And I'm not sure when developers are asking for that. Um, basically, you can get a video frame from an off in canvas and use media stream track, uh, video track generator and create it. 
it's it might be less convenient because with canvas every time you actually painting you will get video frame and people are using that so uh, it, it might be good uh for some people to use a thin canvas in in a worker so, so maybe that's a use case there but uh i would tend to to check with uh web developers whether it, it's something that is interesting because it will cost some limited amount of time for uh user agent implementers to implement it okay that makes sense uh Harold? Yeah, so uh, off-screen canvas has certain usages, uh, not all of them in Worker. Uh, so, uh, but it doesn't seem to be a, a media capture main issue, is it? It's just a, it's just media capture for, from Element that has it. That Correct. It. Yes, yes. I, I I snuck it in here. Uh, the headline is media capture main and miscellaneous. You are correct. So, uh, so the reason it touches on media capture main is probably because uh, we have to add, uh, add that it's available in workers if we want that in workers. But we can actually do a full screen canvas on main chat. Whether right, that's, next. You know, yeah. This is another question. Yes, yes. So this has utility on main thread as well. That's correct. And the reason I brought it up was uh, going through the triage list of media capture main and extensions. And the next issue is actually about exposing media stream in worker which would necessitate so if we say yes on this one we would then have to figure out because ca capture stream returns a media stream and if it if we then did the second code here in a worker you would have to be able to return a media stream containing a media stream track so that's a bit backwards but uh in any case uh even if web developers don't want this the tag really wanted this so i don't know if that increases its priority. The tag is pretty low in the hierarchy of constituencies. <laughs> exactly. Fair enough. They're not, a, so, they're not a developer. So I'm not hearing any strong objections, but I'm not hearing strong interest either. Is that fair? Seems fair to me. All right, but no objections to, to changing the spec on this one? Since it would only affect from element. No objection as to doing that from from element. No. All right, great. Okay, uh, next slide. So this is a PR to expose media stream track in workers. Sorry, media stream. Media stream track is already exposed in workers in the spec, even though it's not implemented yet. But I believe at least one browser is working on that. So there, there was always an outstanding <coughs> PR here whether the media stream object which is really just a thin container should also be exposed in workers so uh, given the previous slide we now need this in the worker um, we basically have this pr for this has been waiting for a reason and now we seem to have a reason so transfer is not included in this pr because there are two reasons i think transfer may not be necessary um, but it's also may not be a good idea uh, if we want to transfer it's more complicated so I, I just want to point it out here um if you if you transfer a stream does it also transfer all media stream tracks in that stream well if that's the case what happens if those tracks also exist in other media streams and so forth and also the workaround today would just be to transfer the tracks and recreate the media stream which you can do since the media stream has a constructor any objections to this one Like we're just deciding whether to expose it in the worker here. We're not saying yes or no to transfer. That's a future issue, but open to opinions. Not seeing any objections. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it seems okay to me. It could be in media capture extensions, right? So this one is in media capture time. extensions. Yes. Yeah. yeah my, my only comment was that we need this for something that nobody is super excited about. Uh, sure, let, let's do it right. in media capture extensions, but I'm not sure this deserves a lot of cycles at the moment, I guess is my thinking. Fair enough. Yes. That was, uh, it piqued my interest because more of a consistency of a model since, uh, 
that to make sure that the model is sound that we have. All right. Um, in that case, we can move to the next slide. And this one is this is a genuine issue for media capture main. So uh, an issue was posed here. How should media stream track interact with BF cache? And briefly, BF cache is the backward forward cache. It's whenever you hit the back button, the forward button, um, the page doesn't entirely go away. It gets put on this sort of secret list the browser has hold and can be resuscitated from that list without having to reload the page every time, which can take a lot of time. Um, so the problem today is that pages with live camera, microphone, or screen share tracks, they don't, um, they're disqualified from entering the backward and forward cache. Basically, it means if you hit the back button or forward again or forward or backward, the page will reload, which can take a long time. Uh, this is also problematic where WebRTC is used. Uh, a lot of pages actually use it for, unfortunately, for tracking. So it's a significant portion of web pages, much more than get user media that this could impact. So it's always been, uh, I think browsers have tried to optimize this to remove this problem. And that starts, I think, with get user media. So the proposal here is to uh, end camera, microphone, and screen share tracks, but keep the page salvageable, which is a spec term for BF cacheable. And then queue an end of the event to fire if the page is ever restored. And this is current Safari behavior, I believe. And there's some interest uh, from other browsers in doing the same. I wanted to call out that I tried to figure out. Uh, so this relies, this would rely on web pages already observing the end of the event correctly to detect this. Uh, when I did test that, I tested across a large number of uh, video conferencing, the most well-known video conferencing sites. And uh, the results were a bit discouraging, but I think um, since the, the argument is that the end of the event already exists and can fire for other reasons today, so applications should already be handling it even if they are not. So even though web compact might seem like a concern here, uh, the argument is that these websites are arguably broken today because if they do receive an ended event, like, um, you know, disconnecting Bluetooth or something like that, it would actually be an improvement if we gave web pages another reason to come back and look at and fix this. So even though BF cache in the short term will make the symptom worse, it might likely improve the chances of websites fixing it. Win win. Uh, you win. Yeah, it's definitely win-win. Uh, I like it. Uh, I like it because it's Safari's behavior, so there's nothing to do on, uh, on our side. But uh, more importantly, um, websites currently do not handle well when uh, devices are plugged out or there's a failure, there's a capture failure. And it's, uh, it, it's something that at least Safari users are, uh, <coughs> have issues with, and it would be good if we if we could, uh, within the WebRTC Working Group, uh, help in, in that regard, help uh, website developers to actually handle this care uh, well. And yeah, uh, BF Cache will be another incentive for them to actually look at it. Uh, but ho hopefully we can be more proactive than that. Uh, I don't have concrete uh, actions we could do there, except then maybe pinging uh, all these websites. Uh, maybe that's the uh, solution there. A uh, big plus one for this one. All right, great to hear. Um, any other opinions, concerns, Harold? So uh, we had a lot of dealings with the with the BF Cache guys on uh, on uh, pay connections actually. Where uh, yes. we start we started out by saying that. No, if you have a pay connection, you don't get BF cache. And we're now at, uh, if you have an open connected pay connection, you don't get BF cache. So, and then being a more BF cache friendly, they will probably like some, uh, be liked by some people. But I do see some compatibility issues. So, 
my immediate mm -hmm. thought is uh, sounds nice, but I haven't thought this, this through. Yeah, we, we also have a solution for peer connection, and uh, it would be good if we could discuss that in Web CPT as well. And maybe we can all share the same solution. That would be great as well. Uh, great. So I hear some concerns, um, but no objections. Or do we want to um, keep discussing it in the issue? Uh, Harald, what do you think? Yeah, I think we should uh, keep discussing it in the issue. I will definitely want Guido to chime in on it too. Okay. So is Guido here? Guido, have you had a chance to look at this? Let me check. Uh, I have to, yeah, we, we have looked at uh, this issue. But yeah, we need to to revisit it. To, okay. Um, All right, we'll continue discussing in the yeah. issue there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because we, 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 yeah we, we have some discussions with, with the VF catch team about this, but uh, yeah. yeah. And I think part of the plan is to precisely have this discussion. In this All right, great. Sounds good. All right, but it sounds like this, this would be the proposal uh, that is on the table. Uh, and to see if we can move forward or not with that. It would be great to get clarity on for next meeting, if that's possible. That'd be awesome. All right. Cool. Thank you. And let's see next do we, slide. Do we, have a, do we have an issue for uh, peer connection and BF cache? If not, we should find an issue. That's a good point. Um, would you like to find that issue? I yeah, I do. Okay. If 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 nobody did, uh, I'll try to to find it. And if not, yeah. I'll... Perfect. Because it sounds like if the far is already doing that, you're in a good position to be able to explain how that would work. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is the last uh, thing to discuss here. There's a PR on Media Capture Main to add guidance for defining a new source of media stream track. Uh, and this came up. Uh, so Media Capture Main has a lot of discussions about uh, muted and ended. So this PR tries to add some uh, clarifications to what is, because again, Media Capture Main defines the model, but it also defines camera and microphone. So this, this PR tries to be a little more explicit about its definitions that are general and which ones are specific. So the language we have here, uh, feel free to look through this. I can read it. Uh, so the new language is after the application has invoked a stop method on the media stream track object, or once the source of a media stream track ends, produ production of live samples to its tracks, whichever is sooner a media stream track is said to be ended. And then here comes the specific part for camera and microphone sources. The reason for a source to end besides stop are implementation defined, e.g. because the user sends the permission for the page to use the local camera or because the user agent has instructed the track to end for any reason. So this does two things. Uh, and it does a similar thing for muted as well, but the thing it does here, it sets up the, the first paragraph sets up the general principle uh, that applies to all specs, and the second paragraph sets up specifically for camera microphone sources. And since there's been a lot of discussion about camera microphone, um, when to not so much for ended but unmuted, uh, this adds this clarifies basically the intent of the spec in the first paragraph, but also concedes that for camera microphone sources, the current implementation is implementation defined pretty much. So that's that's a um, compromise to describe the current situation. That doesn't mean we can't try to improve that in future PRs, but that seems to be where we are right now. And then for muted, uh, muted refers to the input to the media stream track. Live samples must not be made available to a media stream track while it is muted. Muted is outside of the control of the web applications, but can be observed by the application by reading the, muting reading the muted attribute and listening to the associated events, mute and unmute, 
The reasons for a muted stream track to be muted are defined by its source. That's the part for all specs. And then for camera and microphone sources, the reasons to mute are implementation defined. This allows user agents to implement privacy mitigations in situations like the user pushing a physical mute button on the microphone, the user closing a laptop lid with an embedded camera, the user toggling a control in the operating system, the user clicking a mute button on the user agent Chrome, the user agent on behalf of the user mutes, et cetera. And um, the last part is uh, the examples list is unchanged in both cases, I think. <clears throat> Any concerns with this language, or does that work? All right, and I can move on to the next slide. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I agree with the language in terms of uh, the general guidance and yes, the specific language for cameras and microphones. Yeah, we, we still need to continue the discussion on that. Excellent, all right, thank you. So then, yeah, so the next slide then um, includes a note I couldn't fit on the previous slide. Uh, but also, more importantly, we already have an extension section for what other specs are supposed to do when they define a new sync, when they define a new uh, video audio type, when they define new uh, constraints, capabilities. But we never have a section for source before. So this adds that, that uh, section closely modeled on the others. So defining a new source of media stream track, other specs can define new sources of uh, media stream track. At a minimum, a new source will need to define a new API to create media stream track of the relevant kinds from this new source, since get user media is dedicated to camera and microphone. <clears throat> Declare which constrainable properties, if any, are applicable for each kind uh, this new source produces. Uh, describe how and when to set the tracks muted state for the source and describe how and when to end tracks from the source. And then it also mentions if capture of the source is a powerful feature requiring permission, describe its permission integration and permission policy. If capture of the source poses a privacy concern, describe its privacy indicator requirements. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, that great. sounds good to me. Um, we, we should look at all the specs that might be missing some things like, yeah, we are never ending tracks, for instance, or whatever. And uh, right. five issues for each of these, uh, these specs. Yeah, so I haven't done that yet. Uh, and that, that brings up a question is, can we merge this PR now and then file the issues? Or do we need all those issues to be filed and resolved? Uh, before this PR can merge, like what order do we want to? I don't think, I don't think we need all these issues to be resolved. Uh, we can land this PR and file the issues. Uh, okay. Filing the issues before landing is fine as well. Uh, probably slightly better. Than probably it. better. Yes, I like that. All right, I'm not hearing any objections. So with that, uh, I think we can merge this PR. It sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see if we can merge this on Thursday. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah. Sorry, uh, I thought we were saying we file the issues and then we land the PR, which I kind I'll, of like. I'll, I'll take an action to file those issues before Thursday, hopefully. Oh, great. Fantastic. Cool. Sure. Thank you. Ahead of time. Wow. And I'd yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a question about whether uh, we understand all the next steps. We've got them all down, or are there some additional things uh, we need to do? At least from a scrubbing perspective, I think we captured the next step for each of the topic we discussed. OK. Um, and so I guess on the JSIP uh, BIS issue, um, I'll draft an e email and maybe uh, show it to you, Harold, or, or anybody else who's interested. Um, and we'll take it from there. Works for me. All right. Uh, so we have our, our March meeting, and uh, people should ask for agenda time for that. Um, and we'll, I guess, 
uh, post those gender requests to the lists. Um, so I think that's it for today. Okay, thank you all folks. Yeah, everybody, thank you. Oh, the recording is stopping. Bye.